basically generative and conversational AI are coming. And the definition of that is computer systems that turn data and information into content. Now think about this for a second. If you're writing blog posts, you're writing newspaper articles, you have an application that writes for you, or you say, write something today about how bad Gert's speech was. And it will just generate it based on whatever else it's finding, and, and you can say, publish. You can publish every 14 seconds. That's called bot shit. That's basically a bot that publishes. So if you have a LinkedIn profile, you can publish every four seconds using a bot. Is that a good thing? I, I doubt it. And how do we know what's real? I mean, you can take my voice right now with a recorder here. You go to 11 laps, you upload the voice there, and you can generate a video or a podcast with my voice. That's how we get to fake news and things like that. <laughs> so interesting point, what's happening here is that, great example. This is a video that was uh, big on TikTok last week. There's generative AI using famous people. And the theme is, it's Friday, stop working, start drinking. So a pretty good job. This was completely automated. There was no graphic designer, no video designer. This was done with an AI. I use AI to make uh, pictures of my presentations. So this is Cape Town in the future. I use DALI from ChatGPT. The thing about this is very cool when you do it once, when you do it 50 times, it's all the same, right? So it's a little bit like, yeah, nice. Not revolutionary. I use AI to translate my videos. So I have about 300K uh, people following me or subscribing on YouTube, but many of them either speak Spanish or German or Portuguese, and I was never able to figure out how I'm going to get the German stuff on there because I speak mostly English. <laughs> and now there's an app called Rask that does a pretty good job translating. In estos días, mucha gente a mi alrededor dice que el buen futuro no existe, incluyendo a mis propios Using my voice. Cuando hablo del buen futuro, dicen... No te has dado cuenta de COVID. So I la give it the English, la and it makes todos los problemas. And if you speak Spanish, you can say, el año pasado yeah, me propuse hacer una perfect, película right? sobre el buen futuro. But it works pretty well. De que esto es... Microsoft does the same thing with the Copilot. Many of you may have used this amazing stuff. The Copilot allows you to basically bring up your performance inside the company and automate things and all kinds of things. It's pretty mind-blowing. Copilot was just banned in America, in the White House because it divulged information on the network. So there are many issues with this. But, you know, Copilot is available, I think, to pretty much anybody who has Windows. So what's happening here is really quite clear. The key question will be about trust. How do we know it's real? How do you know you are you? How do you know you're actually writing? I mean, think about politics. This is the year of elections, 72 elections in the world. You know, if I can publish stuff pretending to be somebody else, it's kind of like making fake money. So if you make fake money, you go to jail for a long time. But if you make a fake video, you get famous on TikTok. It's kind of a strange thing. We have all these problems with these technologies, like it's about speed, not depth. It's statistics, not causality. It doesn't understand the context. It's biased. It has coherence, but no truths. We don't really know what truth is, a big story here, right? So this is a real problem with AI, because now we're getting to the point to where AI is becoming a bit of a black box. We use it, but we don't know how we got there. Imagine if your doctor is using AI and, and scans your skin and your, your DNA, right? and he says to you, you're going to have leukemia when you're 35. That, that's the black box. You don't know why or how, but it changes your life just thinking about that. I mean, this will be a very strange thing. Of course, anybody could say that to you, but this system allegedly is perfect, right? So we believe it. This is a picture of the Pope. You know the Pope isn't a black person, right? Not yet. But this is generated from uh, Gemini, Google Gemini. And Google tried to be very accurate and what's called woke, so racially correct, and, and this is the result of the algorithm overcorrecting. It's saying, we shouldn't have that many white people, so you made the, po the Pope black. <laughs> so this is kind of stuff that happens. On the left, you see the monkey, very famous from Sora. Sora is an app from OpenAI. This was generated with a prompt to make a video about a monkey playing chess. Okay, it's a really nice video. There's only one problem. This chess board has three kings and only seven fields. 
So it made a perfect video, but three kings and seven fields, that's, that's not how you play chess, right? So it, it's pretty cool, but it's pretty far away from reality. It's just not quite there yet. The bottom line for artificial intelligence, like ChatGPT and others, is frequently wrong, but never in doubt. That could be a bit of a problem. So in my videos that the app is translating, I don't really care if the word is wrong, as long as it's not badly wrong. People have a laugh, right? They move on. NATO air traffic control, frequently wrong? No. Medical applications, legal applications, it has to be always right. So we have to keep the human in the loop. So don't expect artificial intelligence to be a miracle machine. There's no such thing. It's a power tool. It's just like a power tool, like if you use blockchain or Bitcoin or mobile money or digital wallet or any of those things, but in a larger way, 